Hello and welcome to tutorial number 7 about the UH-1 helicopter in DCS. Most newbies in the helicopter world believe hover is the most challenging and most important thing to learn. And if you watched my previous videos and followed the advice given, and of course, train a lot, you are already able to hover. But there is still something to say about hovering. How to get into, in the right and easy way and how to train and improve it. And to be honest, many of you may not follow my advice and instead they are trying to achieve a faster success or at least have instant fun flying around. Therefore, let's start again with some basics. This video may be a review of already explained steps, but this time only focused on how to hover. As mentioned in one of the previous videos, a helicopter is not really unstable, but even more very reactive. Depending on the type of helicopter, he reacts pretty fast, like the Gazelle, or with some delay, like the UH-1. This depends on factors like the rotor system and the total mass that has to be moved, accelerated, decelerated or lifted. So you may compare the Gazelle with a small, overpowered sports car, while the UE is more a big and bulky pickup truck. Always remember, the major problem hovering a helicopter is over-controlling. It is the pilot who induces rapid changes in flight attitude and altitude and not the aircraft. Either initial control inputs are too much or while the aircraft reacts with delay, additional and therefore too much input by the pilot leads to over-controlling. If you followed the advice given in previous videos, you should have already developed a good feeling for your controls. And over-controlling may not be a big issue anymore. In the beginning, I recommend that we use the control indicator's help by pressing the right control and enter on your keyboard. We always follow a three-step procedure. First step, preparation. We already knew a lot about our helicopter, so we used that knowledge. Let's start with the cyclic position. In a hover, the cyclic is usually moved slightly backward, because the center of gravity is generally in front of the rotor mast. It is also a little bit moved to the left, counteracting tailward thrust, which otherwise pushes the aircraft to the right. So let's set up this first. If you use a joystick with a center position supported by a spring, you also should use the trim function at this moment. By pressing the trim button, you define the actual cyclic control setting as your stick's new center position. It is beneficial because it, you don't need to push against the spring and may be a little bit more relaxed on the controls. We also knew that to take off from the ground, we need a lot of engine power, which produces a lot of torque. This torque will be let the helicopter nose to move to the right, so we counteract in advance by pressing the left pedal. Last check on the instruments and if everything is in the green, we move to step 2. The correction phase. We increase collective, thereby lift, until the weight of the aircraft is close to 100% supported by the main rotor. This reduces the friction between the aircraft and the ground, close to zero, so you can see and feel tendencies. If you watch the torque meter while raising the collective slowly, nothing will happen until the needle passes the 20% mark. At around 25% he starts to move. With a full tank and no weapons loaded, the UH-1 needs about 30% to torque to hover. If you already pushed too much left pedal, the aircraft would start turn left. If you pushed not enough, it would turn right. So you correct this while still on the ground, by a power output close to hovering. 
Also, if your cyclic is not correctly positioned, the aircraft will try to move. So you correct this now, while still on the ground. Phase 2 – Actual Takeoff To get into a hover, keep your eyes outside about 15 to 20 feet in front of your aircraft. Increase the collective slowly and slightly. Only minor changes at the pedals are necessary. Keep the helicopter stationary by counteracting any forward, backward or sideward movement with the cyclic. If you have still difficulties thereby, only forward movement is allowed. When at a suitable, stable height, stop moving the collective, no need for significant changes. And still keep in mind, you do it best when you do nothing at all. At this point, we come back to the slow reaction of the UE. The following is only to demonstrate that. There are many pilots out there with such habits, but this is another story. Because the aircraft reacts with delay, you can give constant contradictionary inputs and the aircraft is still hovering stable. You just have to make sure that you balance each input with the next one. In a hover, you have to have sensitive control over all three axes. Most important, the pedals. First of all, it is essential to prevent the nose from turning left or right. An example of what it is all about pedals and why it is so crucial at that moment. Your aircraft is moving forward while simultaneously turning to the left. You react with aft cyclic, but at the time the helicopter responds to your cyclic input, former forward may now be right. It may stop moving in the initial direction, now to the right, and highly likely also backwards, because of your control input. The point is, you have no reference in the outside world on which you determine the slightest movement of your helicopter. So you get messed up very quickly. Looking forward outside the cockpit on a reference point and keeping the nose straight is essential. In the beginning, you may over control and lose more and more control of your aircraft because your corrective action may become too late or too strong or even too weak. Before you crash because of that constant fight, let him go, if under any circumstances possible with some forward movement. As I am said, the helicopter alone does not flip flop around by himself. So, when he stabilized itself, you may start again to bring him back under your will. Just think about it and don't really move your cyclic. Let's bring him back to the numbers and align with the runway center line. Again, I will show you something that may surprise you. If you follow this tutorial carefully, going to the three-step procedure while pulling collective carefully to 30% torque, the helicopter will hover by himself. If you add 30% torque, there is only one thing to do. Don't touch anything, because it is the pilot who causes the trouble. The aircraft may be slowly moving around, but don't get out of control or crashes. Of course, this works only with a zero wind condition. Any strong wind will prevent us from doing that. If you add 30% torque, stay focused on pedals and cyclic and don't touch the collective anymore. In fact, and as you can see, hover is very easy. Lifting the aircraft above the ground and prevent the pilot from doing everything wrong. Because 
He does it best when he makes nothing at all. In the next video we talk about moving the helicopter around in a hover flight and how to train that. Thank you for watching, subscribe to the channel and please give us a like. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know in the comments below. Always happy landings and see you next time.